How do I think science is perceived in society? One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We love it. We love our gadgets. We love the great, you know, new therapies when people are trying to deal with health issues. We love how it can explain all kinds of things in the natural world. I do think, however, that there are certain contexts that are more controversial. One of the things that's really striking is that uh, when we ask people about um, new issues such as gene editing, either for humans or animal genetic engineering, people really uh, have different views depending on the purpose or the context. For many people, science is a source of wonder. It's a source of discovery. Other people are a little frightened by science. They're worried about the pace of change, whether science will help them uh, or make them lose control of their lives. By and large, the public looks at science as uh, the goose that lays golden eggs. But we also live in a society where the results of science and innovation themselves uh, uh, bring with them a whole range of risks. I think science, like any human endeavor, is, is steeped in trust. Um, there's definitely the data-driven side. We want to look at numbers. We want to say what they mean. But who gets to do that? And who gets to say what it means? And who gets to make decisions? You know, why should I listen to this expert and not this one? Science skepticism is not a, a knowledge deficit issue. It's much more complex than that. We need to understand that people's opinions uh, are based on their values and their ideologies and preferences. Controversial issues are a great example of these. On issues like uh, vaccination and climate change, uh, some of the people who are raised the biggest questions are actually quite knowledgeable. And so the questions are sometimes about, is the science right? And are sometimes about, uh, are you guys really thinking about what the science means to someone like me? So just to give you one example, the idea of whether you favor or oppose mandating a childhood vaccines for measles, mumps, rubella is not connected with people's uh, science knowledge level. Climate change isn't just about the data. You know, the data is numbers are going up uh, as far as like say global temperatures, uh, but you know, iceberg mass is going down. And I don't think that's the controversy. It's, but what are we gonna do about it? Fake news left and right. Fake, fake, news. News. fake news. Fake news. The internet has really changed how science is perceived. Now we live in a world where information is everywhere, and so many people claim to be experts. When you think about the internet, there's really three types of information. There are facts, there are opinions, and then there's willful attempts to mislead. Uh, which can be presented as a fact or opinion. The fake news that gets the attention is the outrageous stuff. There is the downside of the information technology revolution. I think for the public at large, the internet has become what one might call a truth instrument. The Google is the truth machine. You Google something and it throws up answers for you. And the answers are not always uh, validated. The Pew Research Center has done a lot of work to better understand the flow of information and potentially misinformation. One of the things we learned is that people are saying that they see science-related posts on social media, but they also say that they're skeptical about what they see. I think that there's a lot of positives to social media and the immediacy of information, but with that, there, there are legitimate concerns. There is so much information out there, um, is how to know what is factual, what is this. What we know today is that when people process new information, the emotions come first and the rest of the thinking comes later. Uh, it's a concept called motivated reasoning and it explains why people love news articles that tell them what they already know and really are critical of articles that may be true but that criticize something they believe in. One reaction might be, 
okay, I'm gonna change what I'm doing, but another reaction is, are you sure you know what you're doing? How do we begin to communicate science for a world which is which is changing so so rapidly? The problem seems to be that there are thousands of little experiments which are going on, not just in India, but all over the world. And we don't seem to be aware of them. Science in daily life, science in local communities, indigenous scientific knowledge is in Africa and different parts of the world. There are a thousand issues on which science needs to say something, which impact on people's life. So the way to get someone to think about science is not to tell a story about you and not to tell a story about an abstraction, but to tell a story about them, about a core concern that they have or a core concern that they have about their children or where they live. I think there's three important aspects that we need to consider when thinking about public and science relationships. The first one is the way we see the public. Uh, the public is not an empty vessel that needs to be fed with scientific information of all types. The second one is the way we communicate and see and think about communication. And the third aspect is our social responsibility. We academics and scientists have this social responsibility to engage the public, to bring science to people. I think the same strategies that can sometimes you know, see unfortunate information spread can also be used in to combat that. When the last Brazil Olympics was going on, the Olympic pool changed color and people were freaking out. And I just jumped on Twitter and said, I grew up with a pool and I'm a chemist. I know what this is. And people were like, oh, so, okay, it's not an alien. Well, good, right? Like, it just shows you that you can have this immediate engagement. Today we recognize that social movements are also producers of scientific knowledge. There are a lot more people who are not located within laboratories who can tell you a thing or two about climate science because they are coping with it. Beyond this, one could of course also talk about the access to science. Are the benefits of science reaching out to those who have no access to science? One of the best things that scientists can do is think about science as service. And then the question becomes, not do we talk more, but uh, how do we serve more effectively? In other cases, it's, it's going and listening to people and listening to what their concerns are and seeing what they see and then trying to determine if you can use the science that you know about to help them. Science and technology are often a, a key source of change for society. That's, that's part of what you tend to forget, that as it's bringing um, new ideas and new developments, it's also bringing change. A lot of people tend to think that science is for scientists. Science is, is there, it's not for me. I have my job, and that's not part of my job. And this idea needs to be changed. 50 years ago, you wouldn't have seen scientists that look like me. And now I just look like everybody else that does science in my discipline. The face of science has really changed to reflect who we are, we're actually able to see that in, in new and great ways. There's still the mystery and the wonder of science, but now everybody gets to experience it. And that's, that's what I hope that we get to.